Welcome to Habit Tutorials. To begin, I am Dion Pouncil, founder of Money School. In this video, we will talk about measuring time patterns and market moments on the chart. Using any of these tools makes measuring chart time faster and easier. So the first thing you see here that we're moving around, these are called cyclic lines. In the middle of this multiple layout, you will see time cycles, and at the bottom you see a sign line. There's also some tools in the prediction and measurement tools for measuring time. You can use the date range tool. So click and then drag the tool to any point and it will tell you 71 days, 50 bars. If you click the date and price range tool, we'll click a starting point, drag it anywhere on the chart, and it will tell you not only the bars and days, but also the percentage change and price change. So let's now talk about these lines though. These tools, cyclic lines, time cycles, sign line. They help you measure distances, patterns, and repeating occurrences on the chart. To get started, go to your patterns menu here and at the bottom below your Elliott Wave tools, you'll see cyclic lines. We've actually favored these on our two bar time cycle and sign line. We'll quickly show you each of these in this video. So here's an example. Say that you are looking at a chart of the Australian US dollar like we are here. We're going to maximize this chart. And let's say you want to measure a specific distance from a key point in time. So as an example, the Australian US dollar found the bottom right here. What you can do is you can use your cyclic lines to look for some sort of cycle off that key moment in time. So we dragged our cyclic line here. The distance between each line is equal. So we're measuring a sort of an equal distance. We're trying to look for some pattern or some repetition. And the key to all of these tools is there is that old saying that history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. So you're looking for some sort of movement based on time. So let's actually start from the beginning. What we're going to do is we're actually going to delete these and we're also going to delete this drawing that we did. And we're just going to show you start to finish. We go to our patterns menu here. At the bottom, we see our cyclic lines. The first thing we're going to do is pick a starting point. So we click and we make a starting point. Now our cyclic lines are ready and what we're going to do with the next click is to find the distance for each line. So as you can see, we can drag it close to make really small intervals or we can drag it long to make these long intervals. And what we can do is look for interesting market moments. So we see that there's a dip here. We see there's a dip here and here. And maybe that's operating on some sort of repeating cycle. So let's place this one here and let's see what happens. So what we're doing is we've marked the time. The cyclic nature of this move with this bottom here. Look at that. There's a bottom here. Look at that. There's a bottom here. A bottom here. And this was a top. And this is interesting because this is telling us that there's some sort of repetition going on. It could be anything. It could be macroeconomic forces. It could just be the nature of trading. It could be totally random. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's a buying program out there that's actually operating on some sort of consistent basis. We can visualize that with our cyclic lines. You can double click these cyclic lines and change the line color just as you in any other tool. The line thickness. The opacity of the lines all available to you. And the key difference here of cyclic lines is they're just really easy to see and they extend up and down the entire chart so you can match it up easily with specific dates or times. So if we really zoom into this chart, as you can see what we have now, and let's even go to say let's keep it daily. You can actually see now we have the dates here and the month name. So we can really match these lines up now with specific days and see the lines going up and down on the chart. So that's cyclic lines. We hope that this introduction just shows you how this tool can be used to measure time patterns. Repetition. You name it. Let's go to the next to the next tool is time cycles. So by the way, this is our multi-chart layout that we're showing you on. Showing you this tutorial on and your multi-chart layout is up here. So right now we have this three charts stacked on top of each other. So here's crypto, total market cap. We're going to make this chart. We're going to taboo maximize. 
And what we're going to do on this chart now is just show you our time cycles. These are time cycles down here. They are very similar to cyclic lines in the fact that they are evenly spaced. So from one distance to the next is equal. But they are different in their shape and their presentation. They are rounded. They also have the option to fill in this color to make it easier for you to see. And they can be more easily dragged anywhere on the chart. Watch this. We click and hold and we can drag them as we please. They're not going up and down like the cyclic lines. They're these round and repeating cycles that we can move anywhere. Here's our starting point. This is where we're defining the length of the time cycle. So watch what happens when we extend this. We're making the time cycles longer. We're making them shorter. You get the idea. And we can do this in a similar way to what we did with cyclic lines. But why don't we instead show you how you can use this maybe to plan out your own buying strategy. So we're going to go to time cycles. And we're going to say to ourselves, okay, here's what we want to do. We actually want to create our own dollar cost averaging strategy and buy each month. So at the start of each month, we want to buy it. We want to mark that out on the chart. So let's do that. So here's what we can do. We can go to February here and click and here is our time cycle. And we can drag this out now to March. So now we've created this rough estimate. This is a time cycle here from February to March. And we've now defined that time to repeat. So you see here. This is the same distance from here to here as from here to here. And we've now created this repeating cycle. And it's easy to see on the chart. And what we can now do is basically just say we want it to dollar cost average here. So we can see it on the chart. We want the dollar cost average the same amount of time later that's here. We can now see this on the chart. We want to do it again here. We can see this on the chart and we're basically just using these time cycles to measure out and plan ahead. You can also use these time cycles just as you would cyclic lines to try to look for repeating price action. It's totally up to you. And of course, double click and you can change the color. The line thickness changing here. And of course, you can even choose to have a background color. So we had checked this box so the color is gone or we check it's up to us in the opacity. You can change that as well. Let's keep it light. So that it's cyclic lines and that's one way you can use it. Remember, these tools can be used to fit your needs or strategy. There is no perfect only one way to use anything. You have the tools and you can customize them to your needs. Let's return to our multi-chart layout. The next one we want to show you is our side line. So side line is very similar. Once again, it's going to be a repeating motion. The distance from one line from the top of one line to the next is the same as the distance from the next. So from this top of the side line to this top is the same distance as this top to this top. The difference is the side line has a wave. It's fluid, it's rounded, it's curved. It's just a different look and feel to measure time. And why don't we maximize this chart and dive into the side line? So the side lines, you could do the same thing that we did with cyclic lines. You could do the same thing that we did with the time cycles with side lines. The difference is its look, its feel, its presentation because this line has more of these wave motions. And the interesting thing about the side line is that price often does. It does not just go straight up. There are movements to it. It's ebbing and flowing. And so you can use the side line to better visualize that. And in this example, what we'll do with the side line is we're going to just try to look at the nature. The long-term nature of Facebook. So we went to a weekly chart. Why don't we go to its IPO sign? Let's delete this and start over to show you start to finish. So here's sign line. Once again, all of these tools are in our patterns menu below Elliott Wave. So we click sign line and let's click from its IPO. So we click here from its IPO. 
And now, as you can see, we can define the wavelength just by dragging our mouse around. We clicked our starting point, and now we get to define the wavelength. What distance do we want? How do we want it to look? How tall even do we want it? So you can really have it pronounced. Have it as a certain distance and make up a percentage of your total chart where you can have it really thin and small and not so pronounced. So it's totally up to you. And what we're going to do is we pick the starting point from its IPO. And now what we want to do is we want to try to create a wave that sort of shows it from its IPO all the way to its highs. So let's do this to its highs. And we'll really make these waves pronounced. And what we're going to try to do with this is just show this nature of IPO. It took a while for it to get to its highs. And this was its highs after its IPO. And we want to try to measure that. Visualize that on the chart and see what has happened over time. So this was its IPO. Let's make sure we grab our drawing, our brush tool here. That's its IPO. This was its first all-time high after its IPO. So that marks the top of the sideline. And now we can sort of look at Facebook's history with this cycle in mind. Do we notice anything that's interesting? Well, there is some sort of pattern that does catch our eyes. And that's the fact that we have the IPO day here that we started from. We click to have the starting point and then this was its first all-time high. So here's the top of the line. And if you look here, there's not much happens here. But as we move on, there's an epic drop here. You can kind of see the top of the site. There's an epic drop here. You can kind of see the bottom of this site. So maybe there's some sort of repetition here happening with Facebook since its IPO. And we can visualize that with the sideline. Of course, remember, these tools are much more than just visualizing patterns. It's also just for measuring time and getting a feel for the market. The market, sometimes there is that aspect that markets. Sometimes music has something in common and the sideline has that wave lit. And you can use the sideline to visualize that. Maybe you're looking for a rhythm. You're looking for a specific motion. Use the sideline to visualize that on your chart. It can be moved anywhere. Double click to customize it. It's line color, as you can see. Watch the color change here. We can change it freely. We can also change, of course, the thickness of the line, anything that we please. By the way, visibility. So what time frame do you want to see it on? Daily right now, every time frame is selected, including weeks, months, ranges, seconds, minutes. And you can define its exact coordinates as well if you want to. So those are the ways that you can measure time cycles or patterns. They're all right here, cyclic lines, time cycles, side lines, and one more time, a few other tools we didn't get a chance to fully dive into their date range. So you could use the date range tool to measure the distance between key time cycles. So see that we got our time range tool prediction of measurements. Click go to date range. Click and we click the top of this time cycle. And we go to the next 29 bars, 29 days. And we could just repeat that to measure the distance. And of course, there is one more you could just do date and price range. So you could click the top of this time cycle to the next top and you can kind of see in 29 days. But you also see the price range. So these tools are really powerful and important for measuring time. Patterns, repetition. They're right here in your patterns menu. Click at the bottom here. It's underneath Elliott Waves. You can click any of these, add them to your favorites. They're now right here in our toolbar. So we can just click right from our toolbar and add them. They can be dragged, customized, color changed, added to your chart at any point. And then you can use your date range tool and your date and price range tool to measure the specifics. Click a starting point. Click an ending point and you can measure the distances. Visualize the time cycle with these tools. These tools can help you plan, find trends, and estimate distances through easier and faster methods. If you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Check out more of our instructional how to videos by going to our channel. See you there.